If you have a glitch in the matrix you'd like to share with the channel, go to asthereavendreams.com and click the button to do so. And of course, thank you. So, the story goes like this. I was traveling to New Zealand and Australia in between my junior and senior year of college. By this point, I was already an accomplished solo traveler. I had been to England alone twice while in high school to visit friends, and had spent a summer in Switzerland while in high school, plus many other trips. I'm prefacing with this just to show that I was an experienced traveler. I had to fly from Vermont to Chicago, then to Los Angeles, and wait for my connection to Auckland. While I was an experienced traveler, I hate the act of flying, and specifically chose to fly on Cantus as they had never had a fatal plane crash, and figured that's who I wanted to fly on while crossing the Pacific. Well, I was excited and nervous at the same time, and tired. As my first flight took off at 6 a.m. Eastern, and my flight to New Zealand took off around 10 p.m. Pacific. After I boarded the plane, a Boeing 747, I was seated next to this nice Kiwi couple, in their mid-thirties who had spent two weeks in California. We got to talking and soon discovered that the woman was a nurse practitioner, and her husband was a nurse. I was currently about to enter my final year of nursing school, so we had a lot in common, and had a great flight. Around halfway through, so hour six of flying, I decided to get some sleep. The next thing I remember is waking up to intense shaking and people screaming. I look over at the couple and they were crying. It was the worst turbulence I have ever experienced. Things were flying about the cabin, oxygen masks were deploying, the woman grabbed my hand and held it, knowing this was going to be our last moments. All of a sudden, I closed my eyes thinking that this was it, and everything was then back to normal. While there was a little bit of turbulence, it was nothing abnormal or scary. However, the woman was holding my hand, and she too was sleeping, so I quietly slipped my hand away. I don't know if this was just a very vivid dream or what happened, but the plane landed in Auckland, and the couple and I had a nice breakfast together while they waited for their connection, and I waited for my friend to arrive and pick me up. Again, I do not know what happened. Was it just a very vivid dream? Did I die in a plane crash? In another reality? While waiting for my friend, I called my family to let them know that I had landed, and when I called my grandmother, she was relieved. She and I were extremely close, and she said to me, I had a horrible dream that something bad... And she stopped talking and then just said, I'm just so glad that you made it. Have fun and take lots of pictures. Years later, I asked her about my trip to New Zealand and Australia, and if she remembered that dream that she had. She said that she did. She said that she had dreamt that she woken up and turned on the news to see that a Cantus plane from Los Angeles to Auckland had crashed in the Pacific Ocean. But then, just like any dream or nightmare, she woke up still in bed. One thing I can say is that after that incident, I have felt this odd feeling like I'm not supposed to be here, and it's the most disconcerting feeling to have. I've had a lot of bad things happen to me over the last almost 15 years, too many to count, and all the time I keep wondering if it's because I am not supposed to be here. This may not be the most shocking story ever. But things keep going missing for a while and inexplicably showing up where we know we looked for them before. I had a stick of deodorant that I always kept on my desk in my bedroom. I had extras in the bathroom because I always order them online four at a time, 
But when it went missing out of nowhere, I looked all around the desk, on the floor, and in the drawers of my desk several times, thinking maybe I put it there by mistake. I even asked my girlfriend, who is amazing at knowing where things are and finding things, if she knew where it was. And she looked all over for it too, including the desk drawers, and could not find it. And she gave up. About a week later, I go in my top desk drawer looking for something else entirely, and there it is, sitting at the right forefront of the damn drawer. Like you couldn't have possibly missed it before if it had been in there when I was looking for it. For this next part, I'm now handing the phone over to my girlfriend to tell a story of a similar occurrence that happened to her. I got into an accident back in December, not my fault and I couldn't get the work done until the end of January. So January comes, I take my car key off the keychain and drop off my vehicle. I get it back like two weeks later and forgot to put the key back on the keychain. Fast forward another week or so, I come home from picking up the kids and put the key on the kitchen table. I get up the next morning, and it's gone. I ask my boyfriend and the kids if they moved it, and no one had. I thought maybe the youngest took them because he loves playing with keys, but I still couldn't find it, so I resorted to using my spare. For a month and a half, there was no sign of the key. Then, one day, I'm standing outside, and my car goes beep beep, like I'd hit the fob, but that key has been missing. Then, the mailman walks up and asks, whose van is that? I tell him it's mine, and he hands me my key and tells me it was on the next street over. The only time I'm on that street is when I'm driving, so I don't know how it could have ended up there. Okay, it's OP again, I'm back. These are only a couple of examples of many, as these are the most recent and most mysterious, and most of the occurrences happened to her, not me. But I'm convinced at this point that the simulation is breaking down. I just don't know, guys. This is a story that happened a few months ago, and it's the only experience I've had that's really baffled me. Also, apologies if my writing isn't great, I'm not the best at explaining things. On with the story. So, I had just woken up to a pre-sunrise twilight, much earlier than I usually do, but I figured it wasn't worth it trying to go back to sleep. I instead just sort of lied there, watching the sky gradually get brighter. A few minutes go by and I hear the front door opening and closing, and my dad's car promptly speeding off, as he heads to work. At this point, I assume I'm the only one in the house. That is, until I hear my sister's bedroom door open, and I can see a light come on from under the crack of my door. I was surprised to see this, as she was barely ever in the house anymore, due to her largely moving in with her boyfriend. But whatever, I thought. It wasn't so out of the ordinary. Eventually, the light fades and I hear the door close again. I didn't hear anything else after that, it was just silence and the light sounds of my fan on the lowest setting. About ten minutes go by, and I was starting to get thirsty, so I exit my room and start walking towards the kitchen. But while walking through the hallway, I notice something. The door to my sister's room was open, and there was no one inside. No one was in any of the rooms, and my house is tiny. There's not many places someone could be. I tried to rationalize it as, oh, maybe she just left really quietly, but it didn't make sense, because my front door is anything but quiet. You have to give it a good tug to open it, and it makes a very distinct, loud noise, and the glass screen door behind it is even louder. Plus, the change in air pressure whenever it opens always shakes my door a bit, but I never heard that happen. I've never heard anybody exit the house that quietly in the whole time I've lived there. Anyway, 
I'm not sure what to make of this experience, but it's definitely very strange to me. Hey, Birdman. It's your favorite fearsome hero. I've finally gotten around to writing out this story and actually sending it to you, just like I said I would a year ago. As always, love your narrations. Tell the wife hi, and thanks for reading. Thank you, fearsome. I have noticed there are many driving-related glitches. These stories always remind me of the story that I've been meaning to send your way, but because I'm usually on the road when listening to your narrations, I can't stop to write. And, of course, by the time I'm able to, I've forgotten. This was before I was familiar with the phenomenon of glitches in the Matrix. In 2013 to 2014, I worked at a small private group home from 3pm to 10pm. It was a great job, and the environment was laid back. I even brought my dogs to work, usually switching between my ex's boxer mix and my very pudgy rat terrier. One dark winter night, I experienced a strange glitch on my way home that I still think about. The roads weren't great, but that's common in Minnesota, and most people in my area, including myself, are cautious drivers. A short part of my way home involves driving on a slightly curved road that cuts across a narrow part of a lake. There are no guardrails and hardly any shoulders. This section is particularly treacherous in the winter, because the flat lake allows the wind to blow snow onto the road. Despite this, it was the best and shortest way for me to get home. As I was driving along this road, I saw headlights coming in the opposite direction. At first I thought nothing of it, until I realized the car was not following the curve of the road. Instead it was drifting directly toward me. I quickly understood that I couldn't dodge them without risking losing control of my vehicle. Bracing for impact, I closed my eyes right as the headlights were mere inches away. But instead of feeling a crash, there was nothing. No sensation. Not even a sound. Just nothing. It was like life paused for a split second. When I opened my eyes, I found myself stopped in the middle of the road. I looked in my rearview mirror and saw the car continuing down the road as if nothing had happened. It was dark, so I never saw the driver. Before anyone thinks differently, I know this car was going to hit me head on. There was no doubt about it. But after taking a moment to process what had just happened, I looked over at the passenger seat to see my rat terrier fast asleep. There was nothing left for me to do apart from continuing to drive home thankful, but utterly confused. I drove on this road many times after this event, and every time I couldn't help but wonder what happened that night. How did this car move through mine? How was there no impact? What would I have seen if I had kept my eyes open, and would that have changed anything? This story isn't as crazy as many of the stories here, but it freaked me out at the time, and is my only real glitch in the Matrix experience. For context, this happened in 2010 or 2011, when I was 18 and my sister was 13 or 14. Our city's baseball team had won the World Series that year, and my family, my mom, dad, sister, and myself, went downtown for the celebratory parade. We arrived downtown about 15 minutes before the parade began, and found a decent spot to stand, right up front. Me, being an avid people watcher, began scanning the sea of people standing on the other side of the street. That's when I noticed a girl my sister's age standing almost directly across from my sister, and I became fixated on her. She was turned, talking to her family. But when she turned back to face the street, I couldn't believe my eyes. She looked identical to my little sister, who was standing right beside me. And I don't mean just your typical doppelganger, 
My sister is a skinny, white, blonde girl, so we've seen other girls who look like her over the years, but this was different. They were like mirror images of each other. She even had on the same glasses and t-shirt and same colored jeans on. The only difference was this girl's hair was pushed back, and my sister always had her hair hanging in her face at that age. I was a bit speechless for a minute, and then got the attention of my parents and said, Hey, that girl over there looks like Brenna. They looked, and I could see that they were also a bit taken aback by just how much they looked alike, and they agreed with me and pointed her out to my sister. As soon as my sister noticed her, the other girl noticed her at the same time, and they just stared at each other for a minute. At this point, we were all silent and just looking at this girl that looked like my sister. The other girl's parents noticed us staring, and then noticed my sister, and even though they didn't acknowledge us, I could tell they were thinking the same things we were. I could tell they noticed the resemblance and were weirded out. I had my digital camera with me and I discreetly zoomed in on her, and even took a picture because I knew people would not believe us when we told them. The zoomed in picture was even freakier. It looked like I had just taken a photo of my actual sister. The parade started not long after, so we turned our attention to that for a moment, and when I looked back across the street a few moments later, the girl and her family were gone. We never saw them again. The other weird part of the story, which is the reason why I'm sharing it, is that I made a Facebook photo album that evening with all the pictures I took from the parade, including the picture of my sister's doppelganger, with a caption that said something like, You may think this is Brenna, but it's not. Isn't that freaky? I recall receiving many comments from people who were stunned at the resemblance. A few years later, I was telling a friend about it and went to the Facebook album to show them, and the photo was gone. All the other photos from that day were still there except for that one. I guess Facebook could have removed it for some reason, but it didn't make sense why just that photo would have been removed. Anyway, I know it's not that crazy of a story compared to many others shared here, but I still vividly remember how weirded out and uneasy my sister and I were after that experience. And thanks for reading. A year or so ago, I visited an antique store in my neighborhood that I frequented relatively often. I use the word antique loosely as this particular store was ran by a family that owned the building they were in and had a habit of purchasing people's estates sight unseen, so you can imagine how packed this place was. The store is near impossible to navigate as they have piles and piles of disorganized merchandise that is similarly set up to the antique shop episode of Nathan for You. The store was also known to service a large portion of my city's local theaters for things like costumes and props. I can't stress enough that this place was filled to the brim with product that had been sitting for well over 20 years. I'm with my husband looking through a bin of old maps on one side of their basement. I do a quick look around the general area that I'm standing near, as this basement has incredibly low ceilings, that my husband is too tall to maneuver comfortably, and a maze of shelves of miscellaneous metalware, then accented by a back wall lined with Easter Bunny costumes that were truly terrifying to me, ultimately discouraging me from looking any further into this basement. We leave the basement, and I'm looking around at random things on the upper level, and I go to pull my phone out to take a picture of something, but my phone isn't in my pocket. I begin to retrace my steps, as I realize this is probably the worst place to lose my phone. I return to the basement with the creepy costumes and retrace my steps there. The area that I was in was maybe 20 square feet, but this basement expands throughout what is essentially a quarter of a city block under this building. I ask my husband to call me, but my phone's on vibrate, 
and whatever little sound is being silenced by the insane amount of costumes and fabric down here. I expand my search in the basement with my husband continuing to call me, stepping over old milk jugs, rotary telephones. Think of any obsolete technology, and it was in this basement, and I was stepping over it. I eventually find my phone sitting on a high shelf toward the back of the room an area that I hadn't initially visited, and was difficult to get to on a shelf where the items on top weren't exactly visible to me. I don't know how it got there, but it certainly wasn't myself or my husband that put it there, as we were together the entire time. I left with the willies, and I haven't been back since. This is my first story, and it's not a very spooky story, but I think that it's worth telling. My mother works for a non-profit organization, and her and I went to the post office to pick up two checks for her to file at her office. You should know that her office is more like a small house than a large office building. As we walked in, I went into a small loft up a ladder to use my phone without disturbing my mom. As I was up there, I noticed many tiny black bugs jumping and crawling around my legs and arms. We later learned that they were in fact fleas. She and I ran outside, my mom with a $200 check for her job, which she set down on the deck railing, and we began taking off my shoes and socks and removing all the fleas we could from my body. Once we were done, my mom looked for the check, but it was nowhere to be found. For a good 15 minutes, we searched the large, overgrown lawn behind her office house, thinking it could have been blown away, but to no avail. We checked all the places that it could have been, like the car, the trash cans, even in my pockets, but it didn't show. Mom started to panic, thinking she'd have to send her work $200 because of a dumb mistake, but that's when things got really strange. As I was walking out of the car to check the least likely of places, my mom ran out holding the check. She took me to the backyard. She had placed the check on the railing of the deck in plain sight and said that that was where she found it. We were both astonished at either how stupid we were or why the universe was playing a trick on us. One more thing. The entire time, we were sweating beads in the central Texas heat while looking for the checks, so... Insults to injury, I guess. Thanks, universe. Much love, Raven. Love your contents, and have a great day, everyone. Hey, Raven. Here's a glitch that will leave everyone speechless. All of this starts with my dog Scruffy. He was a very cute pug cross shih tzu that loved his human family, especially the human boys. But Scruffy was also a dog's dog. He loved his human family but had no interest in human strangers but loved their dogs. He was a friend to all fellow pups. But he was the only dog in the family and we could see that he was lonely. Here enters Mo, the rescued boxer cross mastiff. Scruffy was thrilled. He got all excited when we brought him home. <laughs> Instant besties. The dog version of Spongebob and Patrick. They instantly became partners in crime. They shared everything, their treats, their dinners, and their bones. The two of them would bury their bones in very specific places together. They would take it in turn to dig the hole, and then they would drop their bones in the hole, and then the other would cover them up. These bones would remain buried for a total of 24 hours, their chosen fermentation time. The bones were dug up by one of them, they would take one each and then lay on the grass and feast. I loved watching them from the kitchen window, it was my live action Spongebob episode. And so, the day of the glitch. I was in the kitchen making myself a very large coffee. I look up and they're digging up their bone from one of their holes. I watch them, chuckling to myself. Mo is digging, 
and digging and digging. He stops and the two of them look down into the hole and then at each other and then down the hole. I realize the hole is empty, but I had watched them bury their bones in that spot 24 hours before and it had gone untouched. I went outside and joined them at the hole. They looked at me in complete confusion. I knelt down and took a closer look. Empty. I put a hand on each doggy's head and said, I don't know what to tell you, fellas. The bones are gone. How about a pig's ear each? The dog smiled at me and followed me inside for their treats. Now, those bones never appeared, but I like to think that in another timeline, Scruffy and Moe scored some surprise bones. Hey Raven, my mother died in April of 2023, and since then I struggled to sleep because all I saw was her dead as I had found her dead around me. Not being able to sleep, I found your YouTube channel and boy did you help me sleep. Well, thank you, very happy to help. And so I want to say a massive thank you for helping me even though you didn't know it until now. Anyway, my story. So I live in England, born and bred here. It was around 2012. Me and my now husband had moved in together and had a baby. We wanted to grocery shop, so we looked for his car keys. We couldn't find them anywhere at all. We kept them in a particular fruit bowl on top of the microwave in the kitchen. I call it a fruit bowl, but to be honest, it was just stuffed full of random stuff. Anyway, we emptied it a few times and we couldn't find them. We searched the house high and low to no avail. We ended up having to ring a car key locksmith. He came out, cut us a new key for the car, and charged us a hundred pounds. We went on our way and did our shopping. We then got home and started putting everything away when... the car keys. They were just sat there on top of the random crap in the fruit bowl. Even though we had checked it god knows how many times, I don't know what anyone will think of this story, but since I've been listening to you, I told my husband about you, and I told him I fully believed that this was some kind of glitch in the Matrix. Thank you for reading, and take care. Hey Raven, this is an ongoing glitch in the Matrix. It's been happening to me for over the past eight years. It is statistically impossible, yet it's been happening. You see, I have a clock in my bedroom that projects the time and outside temperature onto the ceiling. It rotates between the two every four seconds. I have chronic insomnia, so I wake up anywhere between three and ten or more times at night. I'm very sorry to hear that. Ever since I've had this clock for over eight years now, when I look up to see what time it is, it's not only on the temperature reading, but it has just switched over to the temperature reading, and I have to wait the full four seconds to see what the time is. This doesn't just happen often, but it is literally every single time. In fact, the only time it's ever displaying the time is once in a while when I'm not concerned with the time, but want to know what the temperature is so I know if I can get up to open or close the windows. I told a friend about this and she said, well, try counting four seconds before you open your eyes and see if it's displaying the time when you open them. Guess what? When I do this, and only when I do this, it's actually showing the time instead of the temperature. Hi Raven, I found your podcast recently and was listening to a random episode that I picked out. Something in my brain refuses to let me just start at the beginning like a normal human. So I was listening as I was doing some household chores and was enjoying it until I got to this one story. I won't mention which one, I don't want to be rude. Anyway, I decided that I didn't like it enough that I would skip it, so I was fast forwarding through it but it was really long, so after a few fast-forwards, I gave up and chose another episode. For some reason, I didn't just pick the next one. 
I flicked down the list like I was spinning one of those wheels on Wheel of Fortune. Anyway, I landed on another episode and listened for 20 minutes or so, when the exact same story came on. At first I thought maybe it was just a very similar story, so I kept listening for a few minutes, but no. It was the exact same story. Even though it was just a mundane all repeat the same story in two episodes event, the odds that I would find both those episodes accidentally and listen to them back to back seems very small. I think it's kind of weird and ironic that I had a glitch moment while listening to a glitch podcast. Also, loving the podcast except for that one story. It is very strange because especially glitch stories, I typically don't reuse them. So, no idea how that would have happened. So that, my friends, was this week's Glitch in the Matrix collection, a collection of the odd, bizarre, strange, and awkward stories that occur in our simulation situation. I feel like I've said that exact thing before, to be completely honest with you. I really need to figure out a better, or at least not so consistent, outro for glitch stories. I'm not going to lie to you, it's kind of hard to come up with something to say um, whenever it comes to glitch stories. Just trying to, like, come up with something that's a little more clever than just like, oh, here's the weird stories of the week. Um, and I always end up saying the same thing, and I've kind of latched on to simulation situation, because I said it one time, and someone was like, that sounds awesome, and I'm like, you know what, it kind of does sound awesome, so... I don't know. That was this week's Glitch in the Matrix collection. You know what it was. Weird stories, strange stories, bizarre stories. Stories that are like, huh, that's, uh, that's some interesting stuff there, Raven. Thank you for narrating them. If you have a country accent, I guess. That's what you'd say. And how you'd say it. Uh, yeah. Hopefully, you all are having a beautiful week so far. Um, if you are having a beautiful week, well, hit that thumbs up button. It's Monday, so. If you're not having the beautiful week yet in this week, hit the thumbs up button anyways, please. To tell the system that you like the video. Uh, not many options, not much in ways of options in this situation. Please, just hit that thumbs up button if you would. I'd appreciate it. If you're new to the channel and liked what you heard, you could also please consider subscribing. That would be awesome of you if you did it. I would look at you in higher regard if you subscribe to the channel. That, that's a lie. If you don't want to subscribe, I would never look down on you. It's silly of me to say that. If you don't want to sub, that's totally fine. It's your decision. It just hopefully if you like the channel, you're you're willing to do that because it does help the channel grow. So um, you can also join Patreon or the other thing memberships to get early access to, my brain is fried today, uh, early access to content like this, if you feel bold enough to do so, if you feel, you feel emboldened, to, I don't know, what am I, if you want to, go for it, if not, great, also do a super thanks, which is a tip to the channel, never expected, always appreciated, yeah, you can also listen to the podcast on other platforms, Apple, uh, Spotify, Audible, Google Play Podcast, if that's still a thing, I don't think it is, Google Play's been, or Google's been like stripping all their podcast crap out, Throwing it into the YouTube Music app, which is a great app. I don't know if any of you saw my tweet the other day about that. Um, I love it because in the YouTube Music app, the best feature is you can go into an album, thumbs down the entire album because you don't like a band, and it will still recommend that album to you every week. That is not an exaggeration. There is one band where I have completely thumbs down their entire discography because I do not like the band whatsoever, and no matter what I do, they are pushed into my recommended music all the time, non-stop, and I wish it wouldn't happen, because the recommended music of YouTube music is absolute trash, to be honest with you, but anyways, uh, outside of that, yeah, no, how you doing, great, cool, um, Patreon, memberships, podcasts, submit a story at asthereavendreams.com, and then there's the other thing we can do, which is the word of the week, now every worry, now every week, I give you guys a word, you then use the word of the week in a comment on the channel on the screen right now and probably several months prior to now whenever I made that flub a few minutes ago is a collection of all the comments from last week that used last week's word of the week. They were keen to use the word, so they got featured on the screen. All these people went above and beyond. Thank you so much to every single one of you. You all are amazing. Don't forget it. 
If you didn't leave a comment, that's totally okay. You're still amazing. Now, this week, the word of the week is commence. C-O-M-M-E-N-C-E, -M -M -E -E, which means to enter upon, to begin, or to have, or make a beginning, start, etc. There's also another definition on Merriam-Webster that says chiefly British to take a degree at a university. So if you're British, you can use it in that fashion. But if you're not, sorry, it's not allowed, according to Merriam-Webster. Um, commence is a fun word. I will also accept commencement, comm commenceer, uh, commenced, commencing, any form of commence as long as you use commence as a root word. So, yeah. All that said, friends, hope you have a beautiful week after this and so far. Hope I see you again here very soon. But to then, remember, you are loved, you are valid, you are important, you are the best you that you can be. Do not forget it, and please don't let anyone tell you otherwise. And I mean every word of that. And until next time, my friends, much love, sleep well.